Let's talk to Mark right now. I know this is overwhelming for you as well. What do you want to say to the people of this country that are watching right now, Mark? Hey, I mean, I don't know what to say. I, I, I can't believe it. I can't believe it. Um, the crazy thing about it is, is that I was down here. I couldn't get to my vehicle because of the roadblock. And in hindsight, 2020, I could have easily been shot. Where were you when your picture was being plastered all over the country? Know. You didn't even know. I, I didn't know. I, we received a phone call that my uh, face was on there as a suspect. And immediately I flagged down a police officer. So while the country was looking for you, you were talking to police. I was talking to police, laughing and joking with police officers. And, 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 and not only that, we were assisting the police. You know, we were part of the organization that put on this, this, this peaceful protest. And so when the fire, when they started shooting, we went, you know, we went to the cops and asked, what can we do? How can we help them? And so the whole time we are helping cops. You know, and I understood, you know, just recently, less than 48 hours ago, a young man that had a permit to carry a gun was killed by a cop. And so when they started firing, when shots started firing, I went to the cop. I approached them and I told my brother, I said, give your gun to this cop because we don't want an accident. We don't want them to come around the corner and see you with a gun and start shooting at you. And so at, when the first shots went off, we, we turned over our gun and let them have it and then help direct traffic. We helped people get behind buildings. We were assisting. At the end of the day, we came for a peaceful protest. We didn't want anybody to be hurt. We came just for cops and the world to understand that those that are being killed by the cops, we want you guys to know that we're human, but we understand that cops are human. And so their human nature says we don't want anybody to be hurt. But what, what I'm bothered by is that my brother easily could have been killed because somebody that was irresponsible identified him as a suspect. Not as a person of interest, but a suspect. Mark, have you talked to police since your picture was plastered? Have you spoken to them since then? Yeah, I, I just got out of um, um, interrogation room for about 30 minutes. Um, were well, police officers lying, saying, saying they have video of me um, shooting, shooting gun. which is a lie. Saying that um, they have witnesses saying that I shot a gun, which is a lie. So, I mean, at the end of the day, it's, it's the, system, the system was trying to get me. The system yeah, it, was trying to give me. Did you get an apology? No. That's, that's something we did. No. We asked them, we said, you know what, now y'all have my face on the national news. Are y'all going to come out and say that this young man had nothing to do with it? What's your concern now going forward? I mean, my, like my brother said, he's been getting death threats. I haven't even got on my social social media. I don't know I don't know what's going on. All I know for, at the end of the day is, is that I was unjust. It was a lot of unjust going on. It was, it was, it was persecution on me. Uh, unrightly, and I feel that they need to do something about that. I'm, I'm, I'm not, I'm, apology, I'm not satisfied with an apology. Are you concerned about your safety Absolutely. right now? Absolutely. No Absolutely. No that, question. That, that's why I'm, that's why I'm, so I'm in this. You I, changed I, clothes. I, I didn't wear this out here tonight. No, they, you changed clothes. No, no, they confiscated yeah, they his confiscated clothes. My clothes. They confiscated his clothes and, and his gun. Grateful. And then when they got us in the interrogation room, so you got to understand, I was the one that approached the cops initially and said, let me let the world know that he didn't do it. And when we got to the cops, everything turned on me, where it was like they was interrogating us, like asking me, Corey, did you shoot somebody? Do you ever want to shoot cops? And I'm like, whoa, where is this coming from? Why is it, why is it that, you know, and, and, and I know that the world is hurting right now because some cops was killed, but if I come to you and I'm trying to offer assistance, why is it all of a sudden you turn it on me and you're trying to make it seem like me and my brother are part of this? And the world, not just the local media, but the world, has seen our pictures. The world has seen him, and now, you know, popular opinion. Now he's already been indicted. He's already been persecuted because, like I said, I've already gotten death threats from people all over the world because they think we had something to do with this, and there was nothing. And before we left, I turned and I asked the cop. I said, "Sir, are you guys? I see y'all doing interviews in front of the police station. Are you willing to go in front and tell the world these two young black men had nothing to do with it?" And he said, "No." After the investigation. And I said, so, you, you know, God forbid, but you got four dead cops out there and you may have two dead civilians because people think we had something to do with it. And why are you guys not willing to protect us and clear our name? And they nonchalantly had nothing to say about it. What will you all do now? Do you think you need to leave Dallas? Where can you go and be safe? And, you know, uh, you know, at the end of the day, um, I'm not leaving Dallas. That's tell. I'm still going to protest. I'm still going to be who I am. When I'm, I'm not afraid. I'm not afraid. You know, the, the Second Amendment gives me the right to bear arms as well. 
So if I get death threats and they come to my house, then you guys may be at my house. Simple as that. I'm going to protect mine and protect my family. That's why I flagged down the cops in the news, because I wanted to protect my brother. Because the first thing I can think about is them seeing him and not asking questions, but shooting first. And that was my main concern. Could you have, in any stretch of the imagination, thought that your rally, what you did to call attention to issues in other parts of the country, would end the way that it did in Dallas tonight? You, you know, I'm, I, I am I'm so overwhelmed with emotion right now. I'm trying to be strong right now for my family that I know that's watching. Um, but I'm crying on the inside because we simply came uh, to be a voice to those that don't have a voice. And we went from being a voice to, to being suspects and being villains. And my question is why? You said it. You said it. The most wanted man in America. How do we me. go from protesting to that, being that, the that, most? That, that doesn't make sense to me. But do you think I overstated it, or do you no, think that's the situation? I, mean, I, I don't. I haven't been on social media yet. I just left the police station, so I don't know what's really out there. But for you to say that, my brother said that I'm all over the um, news and social media. When you say it like that, it's like wow, that's crazy. So what did police say when they released you? Thank you for coming in. No, we'll talk no, to you no, later. No, 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 what? No. no, when they released me, they handcuffed me again. For what? Because I asked them. I said, "Where's my shirt?" Where's my keys? And where's my gun? And where's my gun? Why are you confiscating this? We've already cleared our name. You guys already did the test. You've already tested us to make sure that nothing. That, you've already tested us. And so wh what's next?